Hey guys, this is Fred from Pretty Fly Games, and today we're going to continue with our top down car controller built in Unity. Today we're going to go through how you can add support for in game leaderboards. As you can see in the top left corner, we have a leaderboard that is updating as the cars are passing through the checkpoints. So if we pass uh, card number two, we can see that play one is now ahead. And if we take play two and overtake play one, it should update when we are passing the next checkpoint. So this is something that you can use in your own games to add support for lap times or any type of information you want to. So let's go through how you can do this. We're going to use the local multiplayer scene that we created earlier. And what we will do is we will take our UI that we already started, the one that has the mobile touch input, and we will open it in the prefab mode. So what I've done, I've taken the touch input and I've dragged them into their own game object so we can disable them later on. But for now, we're going to create a new UI canvas and uh, we're going to change the size of this uh, so uh, we can use a fixed size. We don't have to stretch it. So let's uh, take a size of 300 and uh, maybe a size of 400 to start with and we can position it so that we have it in the top corner like that so let's start by renaming our canvas so we'll call it leaderboard canvas and then we'll add a ui image to it and we can select our image that we had before the ui sprite or the, the one that is included and uh, then we will change it so it changes the size with the canvas and we can press the alt button and get these nice controls so clicking that will bring it out to the exact same size as the canvas you can also do it horizontally or vertically if you want to so let's rename this into uh, background and uh, then we'll add a text object and we'll use regular text for this and we will call it header text and let's change the text for this into leaderboard and uh, let's change it so it also scales in the horizontal together with the image and we'll put it on the right size the same as the our image and then we can move it up a bit let's focus on it center it and make it a lot bigger uh, it's a bit too big maybe we need to make it all right that's probably too big let's change it down do something like that all right so now we have a, a nice uh, sort of uh, image here and we can change it into a little bit darker and we can also make it transparent so we can see through it okay perfect so let's also change the header into a, a bold typeface instead and uh, let's actually change the the size of uh, our background image so it's smaller and becomes a header and maybe turn it into something more interesting like a blue color uh, something like that all right so now we have our header and uh, with our text and what we want to do is we want to create um, the bottom part uh, of it and we want to have a background to it and uh, what we want with the background is uh, for it to scale automatically dependent on the size uh, of our leaderboard so if you have two players we want it to scale automatically to just fit those two players if you have three players then we want it to be bigger and uh, of course you can do this manually but it becomes very tedious uh, when you have a lot of cars and uh, well it's easier to just automate it so let's uh, start by adding our uh, empty child and we will call this uh, our leaderboard list uh, and then we will add a vertical layout group to it then we can change the child alignment to upper center and also we will change the pivot point to be on top well, actually not like that now it's on the bottom and if we change it to one it's going to be on top and then we can drag it up uh, so it aligns 
with the lower part of our leaderboard header and uh, we can expand it so it's expanding uh, on the on the horizontal axis and we can bring it up again like that uh, and then we will uncheck this child force expand and uh, what we will do is we will also add a content uh, size fitter and we will change the vertical fit to be preferred size so now we can see that we can no longer change our height because it's basing that on the content and the content is right now zero that's why we get a zero height then let's create a, a new child so we'll create an empty game object and we will call it leaderboard item so this is where uh, the leaderboard things like the player name and position will be at so let's change the width to 300 and height to 50. okay so uh, right now it's empty but we will add uh, more things into it later on if we duplicate it we can see that it's uh, stacking them up because we have our vertical layout group that will stack everything vertically so that's all good and uh, if we uh, now take our background image and duplicate it and we'll put it up here uh, we can uh, now add uh, an element uh, because we don't want this background to really stack like the other things so what we will add is a layout element and this uh, we have a bunch of settings but what we will use is ignore layout so it will not uh, change uh, the the position of this uh, according to uh, uh, our, our vertical layout uh, group here uh, so we can do a, a bit of a trick with this so let's just uh, force it to expand in all directions like that and then let's get rid of this uh, sizing so we can put everything to zero so it fills out in all directions and then we will change the background color and make it uh, a little bit more gray something like that and uh, now as we are adding more leaderboard items we can see that it's actually resizing according to the size of our um, our list here uh, so let's take our leaderboard list and just align it a little bit better with the top part like that and uh, yeah we can change the sorting layer if we want to as well to have uh, something a little bit on top of the other like the header should maybe be on top of, of this bottom part but for now we'll just leave it at that okay so let's have a look at our leaderboard items so in our leaderboard item let's start with adding our text so we'll go ui text and we'll bring it as a child and uh, let's position it at zero zero and uh, let's increase the size a little bit to maybe 24 and then we will uh, make it so it's going to be a bit smaller let's just downsize it this is going to be our position so it's going to be one point something or two something and we can make that bold as well so let's just move it out here so we have a good position of it and then uh, let's give it a name so um, driver position and uh, then let's uh, duplicate it and we will call it driver name instead And we'll use the other, the rest of sort of our text area for that. And this is going to be some some name. And let's not make it in bold. We'll make it in normal. Uh, so if we have multiple cars, then uh, it will stack like this. So that's all good. Uh, maybe we want to make the leaderboard uh, a little bit. Uh, smaller so let's bring in a margin here maybe 10 or 5 and on the right side we'll make it 5 as well 
so it come goes in a little bit on the sides so uh, these leaderboard items this is something that we need to create problematically so we need to instantiate them in the code and we need to have uh, as many of these as we have cars in the game so uh, let's just take our first one and we'll make a prefab out of it so let's go into ui and we'll drag and drop uh, our leaderboard item and it becomes a, a prefab so to be able to control the content of this we will need to create a script so let's go into script ui and we'll make a new c sharp script called set leaderboard info item info so first of all in our script we don't need an update function so let's get rid of that and the first part that we want to be able to do is change the position and the driver name so it will just change the text objects when we tell it to and to access the text objects we need to use uh, unity engine.ui as a namespace and we will add two variables the first one is the text position and uh, the other one is the driver name uh, which is also a text and then we will create two easy set functions that sets the position and we will make them public so we can set them from the outside set position text and it will take a new string position and it will take the position text and just change it into this new position and then we will do the same thing for our driver's name so we have set driver name and it takes in a new string new driver name and we will just change this text into that okay so let's save it and go back into unity then let's select our prefab press open and then drag and drop our set leaderboard info and then we will take the driver position and put it into the position slot and driver name into the driver name slot and then we are done with that okay now we need to add another script and we will call this one leaderboard ui handler and let's open it in visual studio so we're going to use the unity engine.ui uh, namespace again because we're going to access some of the ui components in this code and the first thing that we need is our prefab that we're going to instantiate later so we'll add a public game object leaderboard item prefab and uh, we also want to keep track of uh, the script that we created earlier our set leaderboard item info so let's add that as a local variable as an array so we can have many of them and then we will do some things in our awake function so let's add a awake function to this and uh, what we want to do is we want to instantiate all of our set leaderboard item infos or actually the, the leaderboard item prefab that we can then use to set the information that we should have in them. So first of all, we when we are instantiating this, we want them to be a child of our uh, vertical layout group. So let's start by adding our vertical layout group or finding our vertical layout group. So we'll use a get component in children and we'll take our vertical layout group and we assign it to our leaderboard layout group. Then uh, we want to find all of our car counters again, because the car counters is something we know that uh, each car has. So if we find uh, all of them in our scene, the car counter, and uh, we store them as car lap counter array, uh, then uh, they will get populated when we run this code. And uh, then we have our array up here, set leaderboard item info, uh, that doesn't have any size yet. So we need to allocate some space or allocate that array. So we do that uh, by setting a new set leaderboard info with the same size as we have cars. So uh, the same amount of cars, we because we will have one set leaderboard item info per car. And then we will uh, use a for loop. So we will run through all of this uh, car counter array. And uh, what we will do is that uh, 
we will instantiate our leaderboard prefab and we will make it a child of the leaderboard layout group transform. And then we store the object that we get back as leaderboard info game object. And after that, we will ensure that our array that we created before uh, is getting uh, the set leaderboard item info script. So we're attaching it or actually assigning it to this position in the array. And then after that, we can actually set the position. So the array will uh, be a constant array and it will be uh, the size of how many cars we have and it will be static. So it will not uh, really update. So that's why we already can set the position as I plus one. So it's I starts at zero. Then the first position is one, two, three, four, etc. And the reason why we are not dynamically changing the list is because Unity is taking uh, a lot of performance actually to update the lists and uh, uh, also the vertical layout groups. So we want to make sure that uh, while the game is running that we don't have any hiccups of any type. So that's why we're going to set it once and then we're going to just going to iterate through it and uh, keep it in the same uh, in the same sort of structure as it has. So it will be one, two, three, four, and then we will just change the driver's name instead. But we'll come to that uh, a little bit later. We can get rid of our update, uh, regular update function, because we will uh, call, uh, call it whenever it needs to get updated. So uh, what will happen is that uh, our car position handler that we created before, will uh, be responsible uh, of updating this because it already keeps tracks of uh, a list that it has uh, with all, all the car lap counters in it. So we will come back to that code a little bit later. But for now, let's create a public function called update list and we will feed it with a car, uh, count, car lap counter list that we already keep track of in, in, in the other script. And uh, once we have fed that in, in here, we can loop through our uh, car lap counters, that's uh, this variable, and go through the whole thing. And we will use our other array that we created before, which is a set leaderboard item info. And we can use the same number that we are getting in and set the driver's name. So that way, the list doesn't have to change the order of it. We are just changing the names of the driver. Uh, so that uh, will conserve uh, uh, CPU power and also make sure that we don't have any garbage collection, etc. when we are running the game. So let's uh, save that. So in Unity, let's go into our prefab again for the canvas in game. Select the leaderboard canvas drag and drop the leaderboard UI handler to it, which takes a prefab. So we need to assign the leaderboard item prefab in there. And then uh, let's uh, take it for a spin. And we should already see that it's updating the positions or creating four prefabs. And uh, well, okay, now we have a one, one, two, three, four. And the reasons why we have two ones is because, well, we left the test item in there. So let's get rid of that, press delete, exit again, and press play. And now we should have four prefabs uh, created. So we have our one, two, three, four, the four different slots. And it still says some name because we haven't updated uh, this uh, yet through our script. So let's do that. So we need to go into our scripts and we need to find the position handler. So let's open that in Visual Studio. Our position handler needs to be able to interact with the leaderboard UI handler. And we could do this through the event system and other ways, but uh, I'm going to be a little bit lazier. I'm just going to reference this one. And uh, in the awake function, we are going to, at the end of this function, at the end of the awake, we're just going to find it using find objects of type leaderboard UI handler. So then it will get assigned. 
now that we are starting we uh, we want to update uh, our leaderboard ui handler and we already have our list of you or, or lap counters that we collected before so uh, let's ask uh, the leaderboard to update uh, the list and we submit our car uh, lap counters to it and uh, as we are uh, passing through uh, and we're on getting this event on pass check leaderboard we also want to update it so let's add that to the last part of this so whenever this happens we will update this list so let's save that and uh, take it for a spin in unity so now that we run the script we can already see that uh, the each player has a slot in the leaderboard and it's just updated on the, their position that they found the scripts in uh, but if we take our player two and we overtake player one we can see that the leaderboard has now updated and player two is now uh, ahead and then we can take our player four uh, here and uh, pass player two and we can see that it's updated so it works great and maybe we'll want to hide our ui here for the touch so let's open our prefab and we can just disable our touch input and then exit and now we have a plain leaderboard without the ui handling and uh, yeah that's what we want to cover today now i hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and also please consider hit that subscribe button if you want to get a notification when the next video is out i'd also like to give a, a special thanks to all of our patreon supporters and especially msgs europe that has reached the wow level in our benefits on patreon the link to our patreon page is uh, in the description below so please consider supporting us there Here's an example from our game, Total Arcade Racing, which uses this component for its physics, inputs and other parts. You can find the game on Steam, Xbox and Nintendo Switch. Please take it for a spin if you want. To.